What is up, everybody? Logan here again with another video coming right at you guys. I hope you had a fantastic holiday. I know I had a really good Christmas, got to hang out with my niece and the family. Uh, just a super good time in general. So I hope you guys had just as good of a time with it as I did. To This week, we're going to take uh, the market a little bit slower, but today we had a really nice setup and a really nice effortless trade. Rarely do we get those, and especially in December, as it's been a little bit of a struggle bus. Um, the trades have still been doing well, but a lot of them have spent some time getting tested, having to manage them, roll them, all that fun that Vance and I will go over in the next video we do together. But we're going to start out with today's setup, how to take the trade, what I was looking for, and how we got the nice setup on a pretty typical low volume week, right? Because it's the holiday week. So usually not too crazy as far as volatility, but overall, right, there's less volume, way less traders. So you could see some sporadic movement. But today in general, we're looking at this expected move chart where we had that close at 38.44 um, on Friday. And our EM at close is about 28. And this is from Vance. This is his statistics that he has in this chart I look at over every single time I take a trade. And what I wanted to do was utilize 2x of the EM low anytime or the EM high. Anytime that I get the opportunity to use these two guys over here, so we what we end up doing today is if we take a look at 0DT pumping iron, I was working the 3775, 3770 SPX put credit spread for about 40 cents. It was trading for 35 cents at that time. And like I said, I'm going to size just a little bit smaller this week, not much lower, like just chip a couple contracts off. But this gave us 13 points outside 2x the EM. Here's SPX stock. We were in this trade for 45 minutes, which is really nice compared to most of the trades we've taken this year. And uh, we were able to get out four or five cents. And what's really nice is overall, like the market, we just had this really nice setup back here, right? This 3820 spot is very close to 380 on SPY. And 380 on SPY has been a very big chop level. If we look over the last five days, right? Like, this has been consuming this zone quite a bit, like spent all of Tuesday around this 3820 and all of this time, right, over Friday and into today. So overall, as far as like mean reversion goes over the last five days, we've spent a lot of time chopping between these. So overall, I felt pretty good about that position and where we are with support. And just going back to the Discord, we end up closing that trade Actually, uh, it actually took us about another hour to get filled um, just because of this chop that we had. Uh, but overall, end up getting filled on one of these little push-ups. And we would be completely fine to let it expire worthless. But we've had some trading days in December that I had put trades on. We had taken them off. And if we didn't take them off early um, with profit, then we actually would have gotten steamrolled in them. So that's one thing, right? And Adam Mancini talks about it a lot. And you guys in the Discord hear about me talk about it a lot where... Your goal isn't to predict price action. It's just to react to the levels in the price action. So anytime I try to like protect the levels in the market, um, that's when I start to take positions and maybe cover positions. And it's all based on levels. And I'm not out here trying to predict when the market's going to go up, when it's going to go down, because nobody really knows exactly what the market's going to do all the time. Right. So that's one thing about the stock market is it i find my trading to get a lot better and maybe this will help you guys if you kind of focus more on reacting to price instead of trying to predict price and saying i know exactly where the market's going to go so i did want to touch on that real quick before i continue i do want to say i appreciate you guys for all the support we're at 11,478 subs 22 away from 14 or 11,500 if you guys want to help support the channel and hopefully we can get there by new years um, but I really do appreciate 100,000 hours of watch time as well. That's like 11 years, 11 and a half years of watch time on the channel. So couldn't do this without you guys. Every single viewer just means a lot to me. So I did want to say that really quickly. Let's go to the zero DT checklist real quick. Uh, this is updated to 95 out of 100. So we were hitting at 97%. We did take a couple losses though, but one of them was a 20 cent loss. And I have that highlighted here in green where we collected 35 cents, then we rolled the trade for a small debit and then closed it for a small debit. So keeping 35, losing 55, you lose 20 cents. So overall, it was a very small loss. 
And then Vance and I will have the rest of the updated spreadsheet. Once we hit this, um, we moved all of this data to his other sheet uh, when we made that video in early December. So I'll have that in the description for tonight's video of the updated sheet because I'm going to talk to him after the market closed today. So back to this, still a really good win rate when you look at how we managed our losers as well. And we're going to also have a monthly recap video. But with the expected move math that I showed you guys here, if we go back to the expected move chart, that's the one thing, right? Just anytime I can get a 2x EM high or EM low trade, I'm going to take that 99 out of 100 times depending on the market internals, but we had our levels, right? We had our support, the 3820. If we were to lose that and break below and the candle closes below, we could look at 3800. And then we also have that 3780 level as well. And this EM low at 3788 of the 2X EM low. So we had a lot of levels we'd have to break through to get tested. And overall, that's why we size properly. So we really don't even have to worry about that because for us to get hit at where we were, it would take a lot of effort from the market to move there. Did we have a gap up or a gap down? Not really. I think we gapped down a couple points by open, but not enough for any big reason for the market to go one way or the other based on a gap trade. Where was the VIX? So the VIX actually is in a really interesting spot lately. We haven't seen the VIX move very much in this whole month and even like the VIX in general right we had a really big pop on it on the 22nd and a lot of that has already been given back and we've had a very low VIX with very big moves this whole month uh, so it's like relying on the VIX is a little bit more touchy than it used to be of course so that's something to keep in mind as well as we go you know further into this year and into 2023 which is crazy that we're already in 2023. Back to this, did we exceed the EM on Friday? We did not, which made the trading day today a lot easier to say, okay, we don't really have to think about exceeding the EM too much today um, if we were to break below it because it's really not priced in because we do see that about 60% of the time that the EM is broken, that it will break it the next day. Position sizing, right? 6% of your port, 5% of your port um, is a really comfortable position to be in with these trades. You know, because over time, it's all about just stacking the wins day after day and growing that portfolio. The S&P, I think, is down about 4% uh, since, since this time last year. And with our portfolio, I think we're up about 26 or 27% just trading these zero DTEs, this specific sizing, and just showing up to the markets every single day and having really good risk management. So that's a lot more fun, too, because you don't have overnight risk. So we don't have to really worry too much about what Powell's going to say, you know, because we aren't heavily invested in the markets where if you were fully invested in the S&P, which some people are, um, you'd actually be down 4%. So that's the one thing is I sit the majority of my portfolio in cash because there's really no reason for me to want to do anything else. Um, trade timing. Uh, trade timing is really interesting, but today we got a really nice setup. Uh, there's quite a bit of turnarounds around that 10 a.m. spot. As you guys can see sometimes and just overall that with the market selling right into our zone that we like to pick stuff up at like we've added a couple pcs's at this 3820 level and the spy 380 uh, we got that really nice turnaround here and back towards the open so that was always nice as far as trade timing choosing the strikes so i chose these strikes really just based on the 2x em low and then also Hey, if I can get 40 credit and then we take this off for five cents, it's 7% return on collateral. I'll take that day in, day out, right? Just by protecting your levels and protecting yourself and keeping your risk low, especially on a week like this. Overall, right? Just to wrap up the new year, I'm cool, or wrap up the year with the new year coming around the corner. I'm cool with just protecting the, that, you know, 7% collateral return and then we'll keep moving on from there. So, Overall, really good trade there as well. We have the risk management and I've been rolling a lot more than stopping out lately just because of how much the expected moves getting tested um, and with how well we're sized, right? Rolling seems to be the way and that's what I would have done today if we were to break past that 2x EM low. Um, I would have continued to keep us in the put credit spread and like historically, um, this week is pretty green with the Santa Claus rally, right? Which is the big thing a lot of people talk about. But overall, I don't really believe in a lot of that stuff anyway. Uh, but just overall with the markets where they are right now, would have just kept it into a PCS, rolled that down and continue to pull the strikes away. But 
I'm going to keep my expectations very low this week. I don't even know if I'm going to trade every day this week just because of it being a holiday week. Like I'm still in Christmas mode a little bit, but today's setup was so nice. And that's one thing, you know, as I continue to trade the markets and get better and learn and pull everything for what it is uh, and just try to react more than predict is I just really want to keep my expectations at bay because credit spreads really are about capital preservation. Now, I know some traders who have put their full accounts in some trades, blew them up or got lucky and really grew these accounts. But um, you should also always keep your expectations pretty mild because the market will humble you. Uh, so that's one thing is I always just want to keep my expectations at a reasonable spot, not try to do anything too crazy and still risk a decent amount of the port, like five to six percent in these trades when I first start them, um, but also not like 50 percent or 25 percent or feel like I have to then invest the rest of my capital because it really is your money and it's up to you and what you do with it. But overall, for like my sanity and to be able to go to the gym and not, you know, feel like I have to stare at a position because the setup's still there and it's close to closing or wait till the end of the day to close something and manage it. Just overall, when you're properly sized, you can get much more creative, which helps you learn and puts more stuff in the toolbox instead of just stopping out every time and then watching the price zip away from you. Uh, so it just comes down to your expectations that you have in your head. And that's one thing you just want to keep yourself as humble as you can as a trader. And I say that video after video because I'm someone who anytime that I wasn't humble, I got humbled by the markets. Anytime that I had a fantastic week in the market and then, you know, was like, wow, I'm going to put all this here and do this and do that. And you can get really worked up in your head about all these ideas with your market money. But the best thing to do is just set goals, but also make sure your expectations are reasonable and you just don't want to be stressed. That's the overall thing. I think that it comes when like making money and trading is you want to reduce your stress as much as possible uh, just because the market's always open the next day and you can just grab it back the next day. So that's going to be everything for me in this video. I hope this helped you guys out. If you would like to come trade with us, the link is below in the description to the Discord where I post my trades there. Uh, we are starting the small account challenge back up and Vance and I have some good news coming out later this week about um, a sports betting Discord that him and I have been working on as well. Just pulling some old statistics. So that's going to be everything for me in this video. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening, and I'll see you guys later this week.